Hi everyone and welcome back to another video for Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. In today's video, um, this is going to be mainly aimed at people who are just starting the game. So what I'm going to look at is quick ways to earn money early on. Um, also ways of getting things like star gems, genesis points, things along those lines. Um, just everything to try and make the game a little bit simpler to digest for someone who's just starting out. So when you originally first start New Genesis, you'll be in what is essentially an instanced version of the game. Um, when you start at the uh, Alio Town, that part of the game is essentially an extended tutorial. You won't be able to see other players or anything. It's all solo instances, and it's just to break you into the story of NGS, and it kind of sets up the reason why you end up in Central City as your main hub. So when you first start the game, there's not really many options in regards to what you can do. Um, so what I would suggest for anyone just starting is just roll through the tutorial. Um, you'll know when it ends because you'll arrive at Central City, which is where I am now. Um, that part of, of, the, of the game, just go through it as the game wants you to. There's no real way of making money or anything during it. It's just entirely a tutorial. So just kind of disregard that really. Once you actually get to Central City and the game opens up more, um, there are several ways of then trying to earn money and level up faster, um, things like that. So one of the first things I'll cover is it's how to level up quickly. So honestly, um, I'm at level 75 at the moment, which is currently the highest level in the game. And even at level 75, it doesn't take long to level. It, it is quite a fast level in pace in NGS. You, you don't really need to grind as such. Um, However, there are ways of making it a bit quicker. So most obvious one is to use um, a ticket to increase your experience. So if I go into my storage, you can see you've got these different experience tickets. Now you get these through various different means. So quite often you'll get them through quest rewards. You can get them through um, things like daily logins. And you can also get them from certain scratches as well, I think. Um, I may be wrong on that. But it's generally through things like daily logins. So these tickets, so if we take this one for example, this means that when I use this ticket for one hour, I will get 10% more experience than I would normally. Now at really low level, honestly these won't make too much of a difference because the experience is so small that you get from the enemies anyway that adding 10% onto it won't make much of a difference overall. But later on when you're fighting things, um, particularly sort of 70 plus I would say, um, the experience does start to rack up a little bit, so it may be worth using them if you want to level a bit quicker. In all honesty though, I've never really felt the need to use them that much. Um, just to cover on this quickly since I'm here, there are also tickets for things like Mazetta Earn, so these will get you more money. Um, again, these are probably not worth using at really low level because the amount of Mazetta you get from enemies is minuscule early on. And there's also a rare drop ticket as well, so these will increase the chance of an enemy dropping a, a rare item, which NGS classifies as anything of rarity 4 or higher, I believe it is. Um, so they, these will help particularly later in the game when you're hunting for some of the rarer things like the Tisa weapons. Um, not that they'll probably help much because the Tisa drop rates are really, really bad. <laughs> You also have these things called try boosts as well, and try boosts give you a triple boost, as the name suggests. So they will give you a Mazetta experience and rare drop rate boost. And again, all of these you tend to get from things like daily logins. Occasionally, you'll also get these items, so these food items, so things like rappy shaped fritters and roll cakes. These are normally given out through collaboration events or through streams. So there is a stream called NGS Headline Plus and occasionally they'll do like a keyword in it and that keyword will quite often unlock some food items for you as well as other things as well like rare drop tickets. Um, so it is worth checking in on those streams or at least trying to get the keywords from them. So that's one way of and experience faster. The other way is try and fight the highest level enemies that you can. Um within your level range. So in NGS, there is a system where you can fight enemies. I believe it's up to five levels higher than yourself. Um, around there, maybe it's four or five levels higher. I can't remember the exact cutoff now. But if you try fighting things higher than that, you, you'll you get virtually no experience from them and you'll de also deal one damage as well. 
it's to kind of dissuade people power leveling other people through content. Um, so, for example, it would stop a level 75 player from partying with a level 1 player and then going farming level 70 odd gigantics and power leveling the level 1. It won't work because the level 1 player will just get virtually no experience. So, try and fight the highest level enemies you can that are within your level bracket. So, at 75, I think you can fight anything up to 79. So, at, at the moment, that's anything in the game. So, I, th I think it might be a full level gap, actually. And it, it's the same for all other levels. So, at level 45, you'd be able to fight things up to 49. So, next way of getting experience easily is there is a thing called Battle Deers. So, what a Battle Deer is, on the map, there are, in each region, as in Elior, Ritem, Caveris, and Steer, there are two of these areas called Battle Deers. One of them will be a yellow Battle Deer, and one of them will be a purple Battle Deer. So, what these are is they are areas where you can take on missions that are designed to focus on a specific thing. So, yellow Battle Deers are purely designed to give you a load of experience. That is the whole point of them. They will also give you some um, decent rewards as well. So they will tend to give you things like um, gold prim armors and, and things like that. So there is some useful grinding items there as well. Um, but that's the main use of yellow battle deers. And yellow battle deers are signified on the map by this icon here. So they're called yellow portal and then the name of the region. So you can see here we've got yellow portal earlier. And over here... We've got Yellow Portal Retem. So the other type of Battle Deer is the Purple Battle Deers, which are these ones. And these ones, the experience isn't bad for them because of the kind of enemies you fight. But what they are is they are essentially a boss rush gigant um, boss rush Battle Deer against Gigantics. So they're really good if you're wanting to farm things like um, Gigas Capsules or um, any of the drops from Gigantics. So they're, they're good for that. I mentioned there is one of each of those in each region. So I'll just show you on the map where they are. I'm not going to actually go to each one because it'll take quite a while. But in Elio, your yellow battle deer is right at the tip of West Elio. So it's probably easiest if you go from Lakau Coast and just head northwest. That's your yellow battle deer. The purple battle deer is in Halfana Wetlands. And it's in the wetlands, there's this huge tower right in the middle of the wetlands. And the purple battle deer is right in front of it. It's just there. You might be able to see the little rectangle behind it. That's the tower. So next one is Ritem. So Ritem, the yellow battle deer, is on the east coast, just near uh, Tiam coast. Easiest to get to from one of the new Ryukas, the one at Dashmab Desert. So from there, just run east and you'll see it. It's, it's situated out on some rocks off the coast. And the purple battle deer is in south Ritem. Um, sort of halfway roughly between the two Golna Coast Ryukas. The difficulty find this one is it's, it's actually up on some rocks hidden out the way a little bit. So you want to climb to the highest point you can and you should see it on one of the rock crops. So that's Ritem. Then Caveris. The yellow, they actually look really close together. So the yellow battle deer is here. And this one, again, just go from the Mr. Woods North Ryuka and run northwest, and it's really easy to find. The purple battle deer is here. And this one is... It's actually on some quite high terrain, so it's um, it's fairly near the Mount Lava Ryukas. So you're probably best going from those. And then Steer. This one, it looks quite confusing on the map when you look at it, because they look like they're right next to each other, but they're not. So the yellow battle deer here, if you look at it when you highlight it, it highlights a little square part of the map. And that signifies that the yellow portal is actually inside Dryzen Plant. So if you highlight one of the Dryzen Plant Ryukas, you can see it's that same area. It's right in the corner of, of Dryzen Plant on, I think it's on the first floor. And the purple Ryuka, uh, sorry, purple battle deer is, it's in Mediola out at area one. Easiest accessible from this Felusa Ridge 2 Ryuka, or maybe Felusa Ridge 1. It doesn't really make much difference. Um, this again is sort of up on a high outcrop. So if you want to level quickly, the, the yellow battle deer are a really good way of doing it. I would say less so the Aelio and Ritem ones. 
But particularly once you get to... Well, I want to say maybe around level 50 or so. The Caveris one is really, really good for power leveling. And the Steer one is really good for sort of getting to max level. So they're a really quick way of getting to high level. So that's that. So in regards to earning money... So recently there was a change that Sega made to the daily and weekly quests. So it won't show any at the moment because they haven't actually refreshed yet for the day. But each day you will unlock daily quests and there's usually, I think it's about five different daily quests that get added. So each day, they'll all be of the same sort of format every day. You'll have one, which will be to cook quick food. And the way to do that is just go to a Ryuka device or go to the food shop and just select a meal. That's all there is to it. Then there's one to uh, feed a region mag. So that's just go to a region mag, give it an item. And it can be any region mag. It used to be specific to um, a certain area, but now it's just any. And there's always one daily quest, which is a gathering one. So that will be either, um, for example, gathering Thames meat by killing Thames, or gather minerals or fruit or vegetables. And then there's always one other daily, which is kill 50 enemies in a, in a combat area in a specific region. So, for example, yesterday it was kill 50 enemies in Ratem in one of the battle zones. So you just go to a battle zone, kill 50 enemies, which normally takes like a minute or so at most. Because quite often you'll, you'll warp in and there'll be a PSE burst going on. Now, they've changed the dailies and weeklies recently. So now with the daily quests, if you complete all the dailies, you actually get 130,000 Mazerta every day from doing the dailies, which is actually a really nice little bonus. Um, you know, 130,000 every single day of the week is is a really good bit of money to be earning. Even if you're not buying anything from the player shops, 130,000 will get you, you know, quite a few grinds on your on your gear. So it is really worth doing the dailies. I can't stress that enough. Um, they take no more than five, maybe ten minutes if you get a particularly awkward one, but usually it's like less than five minutes. And then you've got the weekly quests. So the weekly quests, they actually reduce the payouts on a little bit. So you can see now this quest here to complete daily quests. Once you've completed 25 daily quests or doing all the dailies for five days, you used to get, I think you used to get about 200,000 for this. They dropped it now to 50,000, but they now give you a lot of mission pass points. And they also give you um, an X cube as well and a few star gems. So again, all worth doing. And by doing the dailies, you'd be working towards this anywhere. But you can see, doing all this will get you a lot of items as well. And even some of these give you a reasonable amount of money. So this one is kill 1,000 enemies and you get 50,000 Mazetta for it. Now, 50,000 is, is reasonable. It's not a huge amount of money. But it's for doing something that you would be doing anywhere. Um, you'll just earn that during the week. I mean, I've only been playing this casually during the week and I'm at 946 kills. So I should probably get that today. Um... Just a quick note as well for anyone who's playing currently. The weekly, the seasonal weeklies at the moment are well worth doing. Um, I haven't started on them yet, but they are well worth doing because some of them give arms refiner twos, which, as we all know, are really hard to come by. So that's one way. So the next thing I want to quickly cover is star gems. So star gems are another currency in NGS, which are used for a variety of different things. So you can use them in, there is, an, there is a star gem shop where you can buy certain things from here. So for example, you can turn on your material storage. Um, I personally buy the 90 day material storage every so often. It's quite a lot of star gems, but it just completely negates the problem of running out of inventory space. You can also buy things like the gold mission pass, which you also get that if you have premium. So don't buy that if you've got premium because it's a waste of time. Um, so you can buy things from that shop. You can also, if you go into the scratch tickets, there's always a star gem scratch ticket as well. So you can see these are 50 star gems for each pull. Or you can pull 10 times for 500 star gems. The downside with the star gem scratch is that you can't sell anything you get from it. Um, but it is probably still worth doing sometimes. Um, just be aware that it does cost quite a lot of star gems to do. But just to touch on that though, 
if you are just starting out with the game, you may not be aware of this um, because it only tells you this in a little pop-up at the bottom of the screen when you log in. Every day that you log in, you get a free pull on the side gem scratch that doesn't cost you anything. So to access it, all you do is you go into your shop menu, go into play scratch tickets, and you can see you've got your side gem scratch ticket here. This is the paid one. If you go down, there's another section underneath it that says free scratch ticket. And that gives you a free pull. So mine's actually just uh, renewed for the day. So I'll pull that now. So you can see there it says. Play a daily free SG ticket one time for free. You can play every day at 9 o'clock. So at 9 o'clock local time every day. It will refresh. It does seem to be your local time that as well. Whereas the daily seem to refresh. Um, and meet about 1pm normally. So this seems to be about 9 o'clock every day. So you get one free pull. I'm sure you might not get much from it, but it's a free pull on the scratch, so definitely make sure you use that every day. So I got like a male inner, which is no use to me whatsoever, but you may as well use them because you can't sell them anywhere. You can trade them in for things called star gem recycle badges, but I don't find them massively useful. So the way to get star gems, there's a few different ways. First one is login bonuses. So when you log into the game, you'll quite often get some pop-ups that give you various login bonuses. And star gems are a really, really common um, present in the login bonus. Now, it won't be a huge amount. It's normally sort of 10, 20 around there. But it's a small increment of star gems that you will get fairly regularly. Um, other ways of getting star gems is, as I've mentioned previously, some tasks that... Um, that you can do in the game will give you star gems. There's not many of them, admittedly, but they're at the are there. So this one that I mentioned earlier, for uh, doing the 25 daily tasks, this will give you um, 50,000 50, Mazetta, and it will give you 10 star gems as well. That's one way of getting them. There is also an event that Sega do every so often. They haven't done it for a long time, but they are actually planning to do it soon again, called a World Trial. And the World Trial is an event where these nodes called Stellar Grace will appear all over the world. And when you interact with the Stellar Grace, it will give you a few different items, but they, they can give you Star Gem tickets as well. And again, it's usually only a, a very small amount, so maybe 5 or 10, but you can get Star Gems from them. And another way of getting Star Gems as well is normally with the Special Scratches, I believe it is. I will just check this. Yeah. So... There's another type of scratch ticket called the Special Scratch, which you access with um, Special Scratch Tickets. At the moment, there's actually extra ones on as well to celebrate the 11th anniversary, and they require special tickets. But they all work pretty much the same. So this is your regular Special Scratch here. And you can see if you go into the prize list for it and go to the bottom, there are actually Star Gem tickets you can get as a reward. So this is you pay a Special Scratch ticket, and there's a chance of drawing a Star Gem ticket. But it's a reasonably high chance, actually. So you can see it's like a 15.8% chance of getting a 10 star gem ticket. 3.8% chance of getting a 20 star gem ticket. And a 1% chance of getting 100 star gems. And also bear in mind that every so often you'll get a select ticket from doing this after every so many pulls. And you could then use that select ticket to get the 100 star gem ticket if you wanted to. Which is honestly what I do most of the time. So that's probably the best ways of earning star gems. Um... I can't think of any other ways off the top of my head at the moment, but I'm sure there probably is. Oh, there is another use for star gems as well that I didn't cover, which is the treasure shop. So this has various items in it that you can use um, to buy with star gems. Generally, I wouldn't um, consider doing it. I don't really think it's worth it. There is also in the creative space, some of the um, furniture items require star gems as well. So depends how much you're going to use the creative space. If you want to use it a lot, then it's maybe worth using your star gems on that. Otherwise, maybe just use it for the star gem scratch or for things in the SG shop. Now, I should cover the elephant in the room, which is Arx Cash. So Arx Cash is the currency that's used for a lot of the scratch tickets. It's used to buy premium and things like that. There is no way of getting that free in the game. Um, that is only a paid currency. So you have to buy that. Um, I just wanted to put that out there just in case anyone was wondering if there is a free way of getting it. Um, now, there are free ways of getting premium. So, occasionally, um, 
you know, occasionally things like collaborations might give you a, a, a premium ticket. Um, but usually things that include premium tickets are paid themselves. An example of that would be the recent Sonic collaboration that we had um, that gave the Sonic creative space parts. If you bought that set, you got a 15 day premium ticket with it. But you obviously had to buy the Sonic pack to get that. So again, it wasn't exactly free. So I hope that's been relatively useful for, for new players wanting to know sort of how to earn money relatively quickly early on. Um, obviously, another way of doing it, if you are pulling on the axe, cash scratch, another really easy way of making money is to sell things that you don't want from the scratch. And to be honest, that is probably the fastest way of making money overall. Especially if you get a high value item, it can make a massive difference to your, to your bank balance in the game. Um, I have shown this previously, but... So if you bear in mind that the dailies can give you 130,000 Mazetta a day. I recently sold a Motoko Kusanagi here for 7.3 million. And you can see like a lot of this is like several hundreds of thousands. So you can make a lot of money by just selling things that you don't want from the Arts Cash Scratch. But obviously the downside of that is that you have to spend the money in the Arts Cash Scratch to be able to get those items. I suppose technically you could buy them from player shops and then try and flip them for a profit, but I would be hesitant about doing that. So I hope that's been relatively useful. I know it's been a pretty quick video, um, but I just wanted to do a quick video for people who are just starting with the game, just so they've got a rough idea of areas to look at to, to try and earn money a little bit quickly, to try and earn experience a little bit quickly. Um, in a future video, I am going to do a quick rundown of some of the better gathering locations in the game as well. Um, so that'll be coming soon. Normally I would do an upload on the weekends, but for this weekend I'm actually away, so I won't be able to do a video, which is why I'm doing it today instead. So the next video will probably be some point next week, maybe next weekend, um, and I'll try and cover the gathering locations and sort of the best areas to gather for, for certain items, just to give people a better idea of where to focus on. So I hope that's been relatively useful. Any questions as usual about NGS or anything to do with Fantasy Star Online, just leave them in the comments below and I'll try and answer what I can. Uh, but for the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.